Hello everyone, this is Dilruba Malik. I would like to thank TestFlix 2022 to invite me to this um, conference and share a topic with all of you. Uh, today, my topic is essential metrics for the quality assurance. Before I dive into the details, let me uh, share my background so you can relate why I'm talking uh, about quality assurance. Uh, I'm in quality assurance domain um, about 17 plus years. I have done uh, as an individual contributor, various different um, QA related um, job um, in Microsoft, um, Cisco, Hitachi. Now I'm in Palo Alto Network. I'm a senior manager uh, for IoT security QA uh, team here uh, at Santa Clara. Um, I have done my bachelor um, at San, uh, Georgia Institute of Technology with uh, electrical engineering degree. And then my master's was in engineering management and leadership uh, from Santa Clara University. Now that is out of the way, let's get into the details. What is metrics? If you Google what is metrics, then that's what you get, right? So metrics are the numbers what provide um, important information about um, any process. I would say about process or team execution or the project deliverable. However, you define your metrics, that number will um, uh, tell you how things are going basically. And it might give you the baseline uh, for suggestion or improvement. So why do we need metrics? As uh, I mentioned, right, metrics drive strategy as well as the direction. If um, any measurable data you get and the trend you see, um, uh, whether it's a project team or management, you will see the, um, you know, uh, the trend that if project uh, might have deliverable meet or not, and then, um, uh, you can identify the risk and process improvement information through these numbers and ensure um, customer satisfaction with quality product. Uh, and also you can guide, um, uh, you can be uh, guided uh, through uh, resource and budget estimate and for forecasting as well. So what are the effective metrics and how we know it is effective, right? Um, metrics should clearly defined so the team or the organization can see the benchmark or the baseline for its success, right? Transparent support uh, from uh, management. So for example, you want to um, get approval for a project and your metrics will give you the um, backup uh, for your statement, right? So upper management can see the transparency of your um, uh, proposal as well as backup, the, uh, backup by the data. And then uh, help um, clearly define uh, the data and the uh, collection process. And it should be, it should not be manually updated or fabricated, right? So it should be real time update what I mean by real-time update is you can create the dashboard and figure out this um, automatically, this number can be updated. And uh, as I mentioned, team, uh, project process and bug um, uh, metrics um, can be helpful for any of these areas. If you think about agile, so um, if your company is operating in agile, this will be very helpful for you. Uh, most of the companies are uh, basically uh, operating or executing their project in agile model. Um, if you are in hardware project or in waterfall, uh, I, won't, I wouldn't say that it will not be uh, applicable. It will be applicable, but it will be slightly different. So um, in agile model, I see that um, the metrics help in so many different ways. Um, it is role agnostic. So, um, you know, don't focus on the numbers itself uh, or absolute number itself. Think about the trend, see the um, percentage, how things, um, how the number are trending, right? That is important. And then um, th this is not mainly, um, you know, who is doing what or the individual team member performance, right? It is more uh, from the planning side, you know, what we are doing right, what we are not doing right. That's uh, the important gist of this uh, metrics. And um, I would say uh, don't compare one team metrics with the other. For example, if you uh, compare with QA team metrics with the development team, that will not work as well. 
So uh, I would like to mention a few of the important um, QA metrics. So what I do basically create a QA dashboard and in the dashboard, I can show this particular metrics. For example, you know, what are the um, feature task or subtask uh, QA team members are working for this particular sprint. So you see the real time status and then how many bugs are created internally by uh, individual QA team member or how much uh, field issues who came in and um, how much bugs they are verifying and obviously automation statistics is important so metrics for automation is also important so how do i um, measure uh, project metrics so project metrics i would say this will go um, uh, any team whether it's a dev team or an analytics team or qa team uh, this is uh, generic metrics so uh, you can see the burn down chart so um, basically you see the graphical representation of how much work is remaining and how many time is, uh, how much time is uh, remaining, right? So work remaining versus the time you can see graphically and then uh, committed versus complete, how, how much we committed for this particular sprint and how much we completed, right? And then you figure out the velocity of the team so if you are working with the same agile team for quite some time you will have the history of um, what is the uh, velocity rate right what are the uh, story points team is burning um, per sprint so um, that is another important matrix and then um, uh, mean time to resolve is another very very important matrix who are dealing with um, you know uh, customer found issues or even internal um, issues because based on the priority you have different set of uh, timeline right so um, mean time is basically a way of figuring out we are going uh, in the right direction or the wrong direction. And the process metrics, I would say, um, if you have um, a QA team, definitely you need to have process, right? Uh, by the process, I mean um, that you have to know um, the test coverage. What are you testing? right? Uh, how much test cases you are writing for a particular feature? Is it a um, UI feature, API feature? Uh, based on that, uh, how, many, how many test cases you are writing? What is your coverage? Does it have regression? Um, and uh, if you do end-to-end -end testing, all these test cases should um, be generated in order to have good test coverage. And then testing budget, I would say that is a, another important metrics that what are the budget needed for the particular quarter or particular fiscal year, right? Uh, how many test beds we need, how much um, uh, license we need to uh, purchase for third party integration or stuff like that. And MTTR I mentioned previously also uh, for QA, uh, it is very important metrics and for overall process wise also it is very important and another uh, important metrics i would say performance metrics uh, so uh, whether it's an api or ui uh, how you set your threshold and how you make sure uh, the uh, threshold is trending in the right direction or not so uh, what is the industry standard what is our team um, co um, you know, collaboratively um, provided the threshold for uh, this project or this particular application. And the bug metrics. Uh, bug metrics, I would say, um, second most important thing. Um, uh, so how many bugs are open by QA team member? Um, how many uh, we are uh, creating and how many uh, developers are resolving. That is a good metrics to have because uh, it provides uh, the information about the uh, tech depth, right? And then uh, functional versus the um, regression bug, right? When If we have the good test coverage, we should not see upward trending uh, regression bug right and then uh, which environment you are getting those issues if it is staging environment uh, not so much to worry about but if it is a field issue then we need to worry about it right now we want to make sure qa team get all the uh, defects instead of um, customer finding it for us um, and then also you have to make sure that if you find issues uh, post staging environment 
pre-production or something, or maybe in production itself, then we do proper RCA. Root cause analysis is very, very um, important so that we learn that uh, from uh, this particular bug, we learn that, you know, and we figure out that um, uh, what should be our process improvement so that we don't see this type of issue in future. And automation, the most important metrics uh, from my perspective, uh, or uh, any QA personal per perspective, because um, you know um, this provide a lot of value. Um, you know how much test cases we are creating and how much is uh, percentage wise is automatable, and how much percentage of that automatable test cases we are automating. That is very important because we are human. We um, when we do the manual execution, we miss uh, here and there, but the automation is there to help. So um, we need to have a good percentage uh, of automation coverage, whether it's an API or UI um, a project or product, right? And then uh, how much defect we are finding by the automation. So that will be a validation of our automation um, uh, or test coverage by automation. So I want to uh, give you takeaways um, so that uh, by metrics, what are we want to do and what we want to learn, right? Metrics are to keep our team project process all uh, every way execution more smoother. Um, don't um, think that metrics can show individual team members' performance. Um, it, it's not intent to do, do that. Uh, the Metrics intention is basically to make our process um, smoother, make our um, life a little easier, and definitely don't um, think that if QA team number one is uh, following this metrics, number two might be doing the same thing, or uh, development team uh, will uh, should follow the same metrics. Every team is different, every product is different, every project is different. So metrics need to be catered as per the project um, requirement or the team requirement. And the uh, process improvement, um, if you see that certain things are not working out, for this particular team and your metrics will show that. For example, if we have huge um, regression uh, percentage, right? Then there is something missing in, in the process that uh, why we are not um, um, you know, getting it when we are um, right, like when we are writing our test cases, we are not finding this issue or doing the manual execution, we are not finding this issue. And uh, after it goes to production, then we are finding the regression issues, right? And then quantify risk and process improvement. As I mentioned, um, it is part of uh, the metrics who will lead to that and ensure customer uh, satisfaction with um, quality product. Um, I think that's about it. And I wanted to leave my contacts and previous um, sessions. If you are interested, please look into that. And if you want to contact me, LinkedIn is the best way. Um, let's um, talk if you have any question regarding any of um, the content in the presentation or any QA related uh, question you have, uh, I'll be happy to help you. Um, good luck and thank you. If you have any question, let me know.